Now on BBC Two, Rough Justice for Pet Hates in Room 101. And this is the entrance to Room 101, the place that contains more horrors than the average edition of stars in their eyes. <laughs> it's filled with all the irritating things in life, like people who refuse to grow old gracefully, people who smoke huge cigars, and Jimmy Savile. <laughs> Each week, a guest will try to persuade me that their own nightmare nominations should be locked away behind the doors. Will they succeed, or will I make them take their choices back home with them? This week's guest is Richard Wilson. Now, we have here the official Wilson compendium of crap. Uh, what's, <laughs> what's just bubbling under? What didn't make the final list? Well, the reason I did the programme is right. bubbling under. I did the programme because I complained bitterly about expensive shirts that you buy. You wash it a couple of times and the label starts to cut into the back of your neck. <laughs> and, and the same with boxer shorts. It gets you right in the base of the spine. They, they made a very cheap nylon or something. That, drives me crazy. Well, let's go on to your official first choice. Now, this choice is an activity, but it's an activity that's rarely done competitively, although we have managed to find a clip of that. Uh, let's have a look, and then you can tell us your reasons. You can enter the pipe smoking contest for a high speed. Becky, <laughs> until you're all puffed out. They say pipe smoking isn't bad for you, and the average age of those competitors was 25. Yes. <laughs> it's also interesting that most of them look subnormal. Yes. <laughs> and pipe smokers are selfish and subnormal, by and large. Right. That seems a perfectly fair assertion I think to so. me. <laughs> Is there anything you want to know about that? Would you like to back it up at all? I, I, or? Well, I mean, and cigars. In fact, I don't like smokers at all, if mm. it comes down to it. But I'm particularly annoyed by pipe smokers and cigar smokers in restaurants where they pervade the entire atmosphere, and you're... Thank you very much. They pervade the entire atmosphere, and your food is ruined. If they want to do it, send them to the top of a mountain or something. <laughs> but I, f I find it really frustrating watching pipe smokers, because they sort of, they put all the thing, and then they're going... Oh, yeah. And they can't get it lit. They can't get it lit at all. And you're watching them. And they're there for about... Four years. Yeah. And you just want to get a big tin of petrol. <laughs> Throw it in there. That's right. And you're brought up with... I mean, when I was young, you used to get um, sweet cigarettes, didn't you? And you used to get, like, um, tobacco, sweet tobacco in a little pouch like that. Well, it wasn't yeah. leather, obviously, but a little pouch of sweet tobacco. Did I mean, you also get licorice pipes? Yes, licorice pie. I mean, I, I think you do did. they have the equivalent today? Do you get, like, white chocolate syringes? It's <laughs> <laughs> a bizarre idea. <laughs> and what about in the adverts? The pipe smokers aren't like the pipe smokers I know, because they've always got, like, really square jaws and a big Aaron sweater on, you know, and a yacht, and they always, they always stand... They stand like this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it? This is it's not like the pipe smokers you actually know who have a big beard which is all yellow round here <laughs> with nicotine That's stains. Right. That's and right. And they're your French teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I think the audience, of course, made it quite clear they've got to go, haven't they? I, I know. Don't play this audience game. <laughs> 
It's got nothing to do with them. I mean, could we enlarge it to all smokers? <laughs> You're not in panto now, sunshine. <laughs> Talk to me. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> the, the other idea is that pipe smoking makes you look sort of more distinguished and intelligent. And we're going to put this to the chest test now. The chest, in fact. <laughs> um, Here's Keith Chegwint. <laughs> <laughs> the tragic thing is, it does make him look more intelligent. <laughs> so there's a point for pipes. I'm not going to let pipes in, I'm afraid. <laughs> it's actually, it's on a technicality. It's on a technicality because, as an Orwellian vision of hell, Obviously, room 101 is a designated no-smoking area anyway, so there's no need to put pipes in. Right? <laughs> it's my show. I don't like the way it's going, though. <laughs> put those in your box, sir. OK, now your next choice, I think, is a very good choice. Uh, Sunday wouldn't be Sunday without this particular choice. It's... Um, it's an exciting television programme. Let's have a look at it and just look out for the happy, smiling faces. great moment, isn't it? Songs of praise, obviously. You're panning across the choir, and then suddenly, it's Mrs. Doubtfire! <laughs> what is she doing there? <laughs> Very pleased. Anyway, songs of praise, Richard, hold forth. Songs of praise makes you sick, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, I mean, first of all, they're all singing their little socks off. <laughs> Not because they're religious, but because they know the camera might just be on them. <laughs> really. Also, you know that if you go back next Sunday, the church will be three nuns and a dog in it. If they want to get a church that's full, they should be honest, they should go to midnight mass. They've got hundreds of people there on Christmas Eve, out of their brains. <laughs> Guy, it's lovely. It's lovely. <laughs> we, we'll come again next. Why don't we come more often? Much more honest. Yeah, much, much more open. And, and they've got a religious channel now as well on, on satellites. So it's coming, 24 it's coming. hours. I'll be buying satellite now. Definitely. <laughs> a good laugh. Mm. <laughs> they say they're going to make it more like normal programming. I don't know how they're going to do that. They're going to have programs like Disciples in Their Eyes. <laughs> Members of the public, come on and pretend to be their own favourite disciple. <laughs> I'm going to be St. Thomas. Oh, I don't know whether I am, actually. <laughs> or, whose wine is it anyway? <laughs> Here's another one. Here's another clip. <laughs> this, is a, this is a great clip of, of an intro into a religious programme, which I couldn't believe when we saw it. Now it's 11.35 and time for This Is The Day. If you wish to join in the next half hour of Sunday worship, please have with you a candle and matches, some bread and a Bible. <laughs> A candle, some matches, a bread, and a Bible. <laughs> the only thing you can do with that is make a toasted Bible sandwich. <laughs> I wish I'd seen the programme now. Yes, indeed. Mm. I'm not going to let uh, songs of praise. <laughs> Water off a duck's back to me. It's not a popularity contest. Now, I think it's important that there is one hour on a Sunday evening when you can get up and stretch it's your legs. It's not on in the evening, Nick. It is, 7.15. It's on in the morning. Oh, that's morning service. 6.15. Yeah. I think you've rather lost your battle there, haven't you? So we're going to send you home with this instant trendy vicar kit. There you go. There's a tambourine. 
Here's your dog collar. <laughs> it's a brilliant catalogue. You know, you can get catalogues. I'm not putting this on. Yes, you are. <laughs> Strangely, it suits you. And um, we're also going to give you this catalogue of ecclesiastical wear, which oh, is a genuine great. thing. They've got brilliant. Uh, this is um, <laughs> Vickers Rainwear. I, I must. <laughs> I must stress that this is a genuine catalogue, OK? And this is the one I like best, cos he's such a model. Look at him. <laughs> he's decided to get into the priesthood cos he failed to get into the jam. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we're going to send you home with those. I'm oh, sorry about that, Richard. Goodness. There you go. Oh, oh, come on. He did say Songs of Praise was on in the morning. <laughs> OK, a television programme now. A good one, I think. One that combines skill, beauty and athleticism. We'll have a look, then you can tell us what you think. Hey! Mucho gusto! Other Latin American phrases. Now it's the turn of our muchachos from Wales to show us what they could do with the cha-cha-cha. <laughs> And this is the way they do the cha-cha-cha in fourth call. possibly be wrong with that. It's good family entertainment. Come dancing. Mm. Come dancing. Very good. Very wonderful programme. I'm rooted to the spot every time it's on and I sit there and pee myself. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it's I suppose it's a bit to do with insincerity again. It's this these smiles that are sort of glued on across the face and those whatever the position they managed to get into, they managed to <laughs> still smile inanely and then there's all these hairdos the women it's so unsexy it's so clinical those hairstyles that <laughs> and it's not it's not jealousy Nick you know <laughs> I, I get the impression that they'd get points taken off if their hair looked natural. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I love the costumes. Do you know, you know, at Christmas you get those um, sort of papery circle things you can get like that, which then fold up into yeah. half like that. Have a look at this clip, and I'm sure this woman is wearing one of those. <laughs> Ken and Joyce are first third in the British Senior Championship. They danced the tune, I wish you luck. Joyce made her own dress, crystal chiffon in sun blush. Well, you can't call that a dress. No. I mean, can it's you? Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's a cake decoration. Uh, <laughs> but you watch it and you see the women. I find, uh, maybe this is just me, I find the, the women in it and, and they suddenly go, she's 17. And you think, she looks 50. <laughs> <laughs> and she, it's like there's only two sets of, of women that can be 17 and look 50. Women on come dancing and women that work on perfume counters. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I mean, they say, and now the samba... And you hear the music for the samba and you see her dance, it has nothing to do with the samba as you know it whatsoever. I think they should have more representative things, you know, like come brawling <laughs> or come drinking. Uh, yes. Here's Nick, <laughs> Nick Hancock. Here's Nick Hancock from Stoke on Trent. He's going to down 11 pints. <laughs> and he's wearing a cardigan his mum's knitted for him. <laughs> um, of course, it has to go in. <laughs> A little listen and bye bye ballroom dancing. Thank you. I'm a bit upset about that. I think Tiger Feet might get out on appeal. I rather like it, but there you go. Right, your next choice, I believe, is one of the most stimulating and exciting of pastimes. Let's bring it round and enjoy. The suits by special steaming down the line. He's not very 
steady on his pins, is he? An express has just gone through. <laughs> so that was a train spotter. Yes, train yeah. spotter. And this is a train spotter's kit. Absolutely. And this is a train spotter's book. That's right. B.I. Diesels. <laughs> Whatever that means. I bet you were good at I Spy. <laughs> I don't. I just feel that the man hours that go into train spotting, first of all, could be better applied. <laughs> and secondly, you know, that sight as a train leaves the station, which is quite a, an aesthetic shape of this sloping platform, is ruined by people going. <laughs> and, and I just feel like saying, could I just talk to you about this? <laughs> And maybe, maybe there's something you've missed. Maybe yeah. there's something you've missed in life. Yeah. I think the way to get rid of them, I think, like, the uh, British Rail announcer should occasionally announce the train spotter's special, <laughs> calling it social embarrassment, <laughs> but not calling it marriage or friends. <laughs> and maybe that would start to sort of tap away at them. And also, like, it's not as if... It's all that difficult, is it, to spot a train? Like, if you've got... Here we go. Here is a train, right? Here is a man. <laughs> this, to me, is an easy thing. It seems fairly straightforward, but also the idea that... The... Has this train got a number? Yes, the uh, 37510. The 37510. I'll just <laughs> check that out yes. in here. Excuse me a moment while I check this out. Ah, yes, the three... Oh, yes, this, this is quite rare. This is quite rare. Oh, yeah, of course it is. It's only four inches long. <laughs> Good way to get train spotters. We, we used to do this when we were younger, because I get quite a few train spotters at Crewe, which is near Stoke, is you go up to the end, of the end of the platform, and when the train's coming in and they're writing it down, just as so they're putting numbers down, go, four, eight, twelve, nine. <laughs> Always a good one to do. <laughs> right, let's have a look at some train spotters in action, just to prove to ourselves they're normal people like us. Can you tell me why you've come here today, Dave? Yes, I've come to collect train numbers. And where have you come from? Well, I've come from York this morning to live in Halifax. So, so you've come about 100 miles to see lots of construction work, basically, because there aren't many trains around today, are there? Well, it, it was a surprise when I got here. I didn't know anything about it. I, I work in civil engineering, and it's of a, a professional interest to me, yes. Are there many lady train spotters? I think it's uh, increasing. There didn't used to be when I started about four or five years ago. I used to be quite uh, embarrassed about it and spot so it that that's all things so And what do you do when you're not train spotting? Well, I work in a bank. That's where I get my money from. <laughs> you don't work for British Rail. I don't work for British Rail, no. <laughs> they wouldn't have me. <laughs> Four train spotters and not a mirror or comb between them. <laughs> Quite frightening. I'm not going to put it in, I'm afraid. <laughs> Sorry. If you, if you stop train spotters train spotting, they just go off and do something else like becoming prime minister. That's what <laughs> right, your next... Uh, Choice is, is the discussion of a subject dear to your heart. Maybe you'd better say exactly what it is. Wait, what is it? It's gardening discussion. Oh, I see. Sorry. Uh, yes. <laughs> I couldn't You've got a BAFTA, haven't you? I couldn't. I couldn't remember the running order. Uh, it's I'll all, give you it's the, all I'll supposed to be spontaneous. I'll isn't start it? again, yeah. Now, this choice, Richard, <laughs> is a discussion of a subject very dear to your heart. Perhaps you'd better tell us about it. What is that? It's. <laughs> Go on, get on with it. Gardener's Question Time mm. uh, and gardening affiliated programs. Now, I'm very keen on gardens. I love gardens, but I can't be can stand people who waffle on about the pH of the soil yeah. and use all these strange names. Well, let's, let's bring it round and then we can discuss it more fully. There we are. Now, this, as you know, is an oak tree. <laughs> uh, but it's, I can't remember its Latin name. Right. And this is a flower. <laughs> That's all you need to know, as far as I'm concerned. You seem to have it down pat. <laughs> yes. 
I mean, yes. When they introduce the program, they say this this program is coming from Hastings, which is a, a loamy, peaty sort of soil. <laughs> Who cares what sort of soil? <laughs> And it's also my theory that people completely ignore the advice they get, because, like, the real answer is, if you've got trouble with your roses, kill your neighbour's cat. <laughs> <laughs> or, if you've got snails on your garden, the thing to do is wait till two o'clock in the morning, go out, pick them up, throw them over the fence. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what, and while you're there, move the fence back a little bit, you've got a bigger garden. <laughs> this is what people actually do, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely. And this is, this is the sort of pap we have to listen to. Some varieties are more prone, some potato varieties are more prone than others. Pentland sounds like Laurie McMenemy at this point. Malice Python <laughs> tends to do it a lot. Why are they poisonous now and then they become okay they when they turn into whatever it is? No, oh, but these don't. These don't. These remain <laughs> poisonous for <laughs> that Even though it's the same family, Solanesi is the tomato. I mean, this is like a, a tomato is like a person can masculine. Shut isn't up! It? <laughs> Solanesi is the the same family. He's Shut up! <laughs> You, you, you notice his nails are absolutely as clean as whistles, you know, <laughs> as, if, as if gardeners would around clean their nails. Extraordinary. But yeah, I think in some ways you do need it, because I, I, I occasionally do things in the garden. I go down to the garden centre, and you go up to, you know, some spotty youth, and you say, excuse me, I, I need to know about this plant, and they go, I'm on paints. <laughs> I'm doing it on paints. <laughs> I'd just like to say if my, the people who do my garden are listening, of course, that uh, are watching indeed, that uh, this is just jocular. Oh. So. <laughs> We're having a laugh. We're having a laugh, <laughs> yes. I also think they should have, like, student gardening question time. <laughs> <laughs> Every four or five years, open your back door and say, oh, look, I've got a garden. <laughs> I'm not going to let uh, Gardner's question time in. No, 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 no. It's because it's good for your self-worth. You turn it on, you hear the people phoning in, and you think, actually, my life isn't all that sad. <laughs> so sir, take these home with you. I've also got a couple of books for you. Which oh, my goodness. Send it through. Here you go. Here's your all your gardening questions answered by Alan Titchmarsh. <laughs> It's been oh, updated. Oh, yes, very good. Been updated. All your gardening questions answered. This is the new one by Slash from Guns N' Roses. <laughs> Real questions. How does a herbaceous perennial differ from other perennials? It doesn't. You can't smoke either. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, Richard, I'm not very happy about introducing this choice. I've, I think I've used up my quota of swear words, so perhaps uh, you could uh, introduce this choice for me. Uh, oh, I think I know what this one is. Yes. That's handy. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think we might be... Are we talking feces here? We're talking feces here. <laughs> or stools. Stools? <laughs> or just plain shit. Yes. <laughs> Let's bring them round, first of all. Bring them round. <laughs> <laughs> Is this coming on? No, actually, we'll pop that back on there. That was very Freudian, wasn't it? You were attacked very... by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well... There's a schizophrenic problem there. Yes. Okay. Uh, I used to work in, in uh, laboratory work in, in medicine. And I, I had to deal with a lot of feces in my time. One of the tests I had to do in Singapore when I was in the army was that we used to get rid of tapeworms from people. And you had to find out the head of the tapeworm it was a very, very tiny thing. So they would send the entire collection of feces and the bits of tapeworm, and I had to get a magnifying glass. <laughs> Remember, the temperature was about 120 degrees. <laughs> and I had to find the head, or the scolex. I remember the, the terminology. And uh, it was a, not a very pleasant um, uh, thing. Now, I don't know what would happen if we put feces into room 101. So you, let me just get to, you gave that job up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, to be with you tonight. Oh, please. lovely. Yes. <laughs> A similar experience. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I remember we used to have to deal with uh, children's feces for some reason or other. Extraordinary potent. I used to get, <laughs> I used to get these carters, and I'd open it, and I go. <laughs> <laughs> you 
you know, you put, and then you look inside, and there was this tiny, tiny <laughs> green pellet. <laughs> uh, and the smell was just extraordinary. And I'd have to tease about with that, <laughs> play about with that, and put it out and, and decide what was wrong with this child. It was quite clear to me they had a smelly feces. <laughs> I had to try and be a bit more specific than that. 24-hour <laughs> urine samples, they used to have to stand for a week. Uh, so the sediment came down, and then you take the top like off. Like a fine wine. <laughs> exactly, like a fine wine. You take the cork off, and mm, this extraordinary, a bit like pipe smoke, actually. <laughs> Almost as bad as pipe smoke, would just fill the room. Quite astonishing. So I would quite like to forget all about that and, and <laughs> someone is laughing in room 101. Yes. <laughs> it won't be in a moment. <laughs> oh, so, uh, of course, you may, you may be keeping... You, you won't send me home with that, will you? I'll see how I feel. <laughs> Got much money on you? <laughs> no. <laughs> of course it's going in. Ah. What? You may have noticed that that is an empty bedpan. <laughs> so, to represent feces or shit, we have here the complete works of Geoffrey Archer. <laughs> Send it down, have a listen, and buy, buy feces. <laughs> you have done very well, Richard. You've got the requisite amount to have a bonus item go into room 101 from the ones I've rejected. So have a little rummage in there. You've got um, pipe smokers in there, songs of praise, no. gardening special <laughs> is right. <laughs> and I'd just like to say thank you very much to Richard Wilson. with a clip from Room 101 which shows Scylla and company pushing back the boundaries of good taste with a truly amazing dance routine. <laughs>